If you're looking to create an end screen in iMovie for your YouTube videos, look no further. This video will walk you through the exact steps you need to take to create an end screen that will allow your YouTube visitors to dive deeper into your channel and get more subscriptions. Let's get started. First thing you'll want to have is an end screen design. Canva.com is the easiest place to create one of these. So I've gone into my Canva account and just typed in end screen in the search bar and it's going to pull up these templates. So this is an example, this is an example, this one down here. So lots of different end screen examples for you to utilize or you could create something brand new. So for this end screen example, you are gonna be able to put your subscription circle right here. You could have a video or a playlist here, a video or playlist there. Um, so this is a really good way to add a screen to the end of your YouTube videos to get more of those subscriptions and views on other related or uh, complementary videos. So you will either want to pick a template or just use a a brand new template you create yourself that will have at least two video boxes and a subscribe circle. Once you've done that, you can download it as a PNG or a JPEG. And then we are gonna utilize that in our iMovie account. So I pull up iMovie and I am inside of one of my videos that I will be adding a podcast uh, end screen to or an end screen for my YouTube channel at the end of this podcast to be able to allow people to dive deeper into the channel. So the first thing you need to know is that end screens are only available for the final 20 seconds of the video. I actually have an additional video end clip that I like to have after my end screen that will show people my social media channels in case they would like to find me on other platforms. So this in total is 44 minutes and 10 seconds. I know that I can go back to 43 minutes and 50 seconds in theory to be able to start my end screen. However, I have found that usually there's a one or two second delay or it's off a little bit. And so I like to start it a about right here. So 43 minutes and 52 seconds. So I am going to go to modify split clip. And now I've got this clip right here. I'm going to take this video and I'm actually going to pull it to the end for just a second. And you'll see why in a moment. This is my end screen and I'm going to drag that right there in the middle. I'm gonna extend this about nine or 10 seconds, and then I'm gonna take that video that I split off, and I'm gonna sit it right on top, and then I'm gonna drag my end screen to be the same length as that video. So if we just scroll through, you won't even see the end screen there because my video is on top of it. But what I'm gonna do is put this piece of the video in the top right-hand corner so they can still hear the end of my video and see me on camera, but they also have that opportunity to subscribe or to dive deeper into those other videos. So I'm gonna click on this clip and I am then going to click on this square button here. Where it is default to cut away, I'm gonna select picture in picture. What that means is it's a picture inside of the other picture. By default, it has these little toggles on that will be a fade in. You can leave those on if you want, but I don't like to. So I'm gonna set that right there for one second. I'm gonna click on my end screen and I am going to click on the crop button and I'm gonna make sure that it's set to fit so that it won't be moving, um, you know, going in or out in terms of the zoom, which is by default set for new clips. And that is just Ken Burns. I'm not sure why it's called that, but that's what it's called. So we are just gonna click fit. We will also make sure that this is on fit. And then again, I'm gonna to go to that picture in picture. 
and then I'm just going to resize that video frame to fit in that little box. So now you'll be able to see what this looks like business in terms of revenue. So hopefully this has been awesome for you today. I look forward to hearing your stories about the results that you've seen with lead magnet campaigns utilizing this strategy. Have a great day. So I'm happy with that. I do not need to do anything else inside of my end screen here. I'm going to hit file, share, and I'm going to export this as my video, and then we will hop back into this after this video is exported and we upload it into YouTube to be able to finish off our end screen there. Now we are going to upload our YouTube video to YouTube to be able to fully add our end screen details. So we'll go through and we'll put in our title, our description, add our thumbnail, playlist, and all of those details. But then when we go to video elements, we are going to import from video. Now that our video has pulled in, you can see that I'm at that 50 second mark, but I decided to start this right here, which is fine. And so I'm going to make sure that I'm lined up right where the lead magnet comes on. So as you can see in this timeline, it shows that it starts here, but I'm right here and I still see that. And that is important, but we just wanna get it lined up exactly where that lead magnet screen comes on. Now I'm gonna click in that center, and I'm gonna click on subscribe, and I put mine right there. Now I'm gonna click on this square and select video. So you can decide what type of video you want, your most recent upload, best for viewer, and this is not necessarily on your channel alone, it could be on any channel. However, YouTube really likes videos that keep people on the platform longer, so best for viewer can actually be a good option for you, even if it's not sending them to a video on your channel, or we could choose specific videos. So I am just going to do best for viewer on this one, and right here, I'm gonna click playlist, and I'm gonna select my Marketing Inc. podcast playlist because that is what this actually is. So now, if I click back to the timeline, you can see that it automatically added those elements back into that 20 second mark, but I did not go all the way to the 20 second mark. So what I wanna do is again, just drag this one to that screen where my end screen begins. Looks like right here is the beginning. So I'm gonna move that first one over and now I, I know that I can just drag the other two over to that same exact spot. Still do amazing things for your business in terms of revenue. So hopefully this, there we go. So I played it to make sure that it is showing up only when the end screen begins. And now my next step is to do the same thing with my other end screen. So if you don't have another screen that's gonna come afterwards, you don't need to worry about this, I do. So I am just going to find that spot where it ends. As you can see, it's not really lining up with what they show in the timeline, so don't always trust that. This is going to be the very end for me, and so I'm gonna to have to try and just go back over here and double check that to make sure I get it right. There we go, I'm gonna drag that one there. And now it's easy to drag the other two and it'll just kind of snap in line with that first element. So we'll watch this one more time in terms of revenue. So hopefully this has been awesome for you today. I look forward to hearing your stories about the results that you've seen with lead magnet campaigns utilizing this strategy. Have a great day. All right, I am happy with how that turned out. I'm gonna hit save. I've already added my details, and now we can publish this video knowing that we have a way to drive our viewers into additional playlists on our channel, other videos that may be a good fit for them, which still may allow YouTube to rank our videos highly if it's keeping people on the platform, and get more subscriptions to our channel from those existing videos. Hopefully this was helpful, and subscribe to this channel for more tips and tutorials just like this. 
Have a good one. Bye-bye.